Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Crypto Corner where I'm going to do a quick review on the new, brand new SecuX Shield Bio. This is a hardware wallet the size of a credit card as you can see and I'm gonna tell you all about it now, let's get started. Alright guys, let's get started with this review of the latest SecuX, the Shield Bio. My name is OJ, a crypto analyst and investor since 2016. On this channel, I have reviewed every major crypto hardware wallet brand and uh, pretty much all of their devices. And I've organized all of my top reviews in a single PDF, which you can download from the description below. Uh, the link is there. It's a free PDF, by the way. And uh, these are uh, not all of the reviews that I've ever done. I skipped a few because I didn't really deem them necessary, but uh, all the top wallets, all the ones that I like and that I'm using and that I have reviewed over the past couple of years are organized in that PDF. So you can grab this if you're comparing devices, if you want to find out which is the best one for you. Now, today I will be uh, focusing on the Shield Bio, the SecuX uh, product. This is now a third or a fourth uh, hardware wallet that comes in this line of uh, hardware wallets that resemble a uh, credit card. It's the same size as a credit card. It's the same feel as a, as a credit card. And I'm already using the Tangem wallet. This was uh, one of the early devices that came up in this uh, format. And I'm also using the Cool Wallet Pro. So these are the other two devices that I have, which are hardware wallets. And they're all the same size of a credit card, the same feel, the same width and everything. So um, it is a very similar device. However, this device has a screen, as you can see here, and uh, it has a couple of buttons to navigate and it also has a touch sensor. Now, uh, it compares to the Cool Wallet Pro because it also has a screen and it also has a button, even though it's just one button here. And uh, this is how you power it. And uh, pretty much this is how you navigate with the device. It's the app that really navigates these devices. But of course, you have to approve transactions on the device. But uh, before I go into any more details about the device, let's do a quick unboxing. Let's see what's in the box. First, you're going to see that you have this sticker here. And uh, this should not be broken, this seal should be untouched. This is how you know that nobody has had access to that device before you. Now, I'm going to peel this so that I can open it without tearing the box. This is the device and the charger. And here we have a getting started guide, a couple of recovery sheets, these are a standard, as you can see here, you can fit up to 24 words on each of these. And this is where you're going to record your seed phrase, your recovery phrase, unless you have a metal plate to store it more securely. I'm using metal plates, I've talked a lot about them, you can find them in my videos and everything. And here we have a pouch, slightly larger than a standard card holder. I would say a standard card holder could be a little bit slimmer than that, but altogether this is a very standard leather pouch. Okay, perfect. This is the thumbnail sensor and then two buttons. And then we have the screen. On the back there is a sticker that I can remove, just a protective layer. I'm gonna keep it for now. There is a warning here that before you start, you need to actually charge the card. And uh, you have here a cable, and uh, here is the charger device. So you will be inserting the card into this device, charging it for at least two hours. This is what's recommended here. And that's it. This is everything we have in the box. It's everything that we need. All right, now let's start the review. Uh, the three general categories that I use to guide me when buying a hardware wallet are first form factor, the security, the overall design and the user experience. Then second, I'm looking at coin support. Uh, what coins, how many networks are supported and if there's any unique coins or tokens or third party wallets connected to each of these. And then finally, the third category is the price. 
is it a good value for money or is it worth the money so to speak i will mark this with timestamps too so you can navigate easily between them later now let's get into it well first let's look at the design of this product it is already, as I said, a card-sized piece of hardware that you can carry in a regular wallet. Although I'm yet to see anyone carry these around. I had it with me for a couple of days and I freaked out that I might lose it. So it stays in the house. But when I travel, it's ideal because I don't have to worry about even bringing a case for it. Inconspicuous and lightweight with a screen, which is where it differs from Tangem and it's uh, similar to Cool Wallet Pro, which is uh, the other card-sized device that has a screen. And I will probably do a comparison video very soon, so watch out for this. Uh, the battery of this device is rechargeable and uh, you're using a, this charger with it, uh, which I showed you already. It is a micro USB charger and it's only used to charge the device. It's not for transmitting data. So you can use basically any cable that you have. If you have a micro USB cable that is with a longer cord, you might want to use that because it's more convenient. Uh, you're not transmitting that data with the cable, you're doing that via Bluetooth. There is a secure element here. The chip is with certification CCEEL 5 Plus. It's not the latest security, which is the 6 Plus, but it doesn't bother me that much because it's the most commonly used chip in the majority of the devices on the market. And most of the competition currently is with the same chip. So it's not a deal breaker. This uh, most likely keeps the price below a certain threshold. And that's also important for many. There's also a pin number that you will be setting up and you have the fingerprint sensor. So quite a few steps of security plus the screen where you can see the wallet address to which you are sending a transaction before you approve it. You can see it on the screen of the actual device. So in that regard, that's an extra step of security and I like that. All right, well, moving on to the user experience. Seriously, if you don't yet have a card-like wallet, you have to get one even just to see how it feels and uh, to see how smooth and quickly it is to make transactions with just taps and on a card. Really, the appearance of it just makes sense with transaction signing. It's a step, uh, actually, it's a few steps easier for someone who is new to crypto to operate with this kind of device because just holding a credit card-like wallet already sends signals to your brain that you are uh, dealing with transactions with uh, financial transactions you know you're sending money or you're receiving money even though you don't really need the device to receive money you only need it to send money you can check uh, you're using a mobile app and with the mobile app you can navigate everything but also you can check your balances or you can receive money without needing the card the mobile app is enough for that you can uh, find your wallet address in the mobile app send it to the person that needs to send you a transaction or copy your address if you are sending you know from a, an exchange into this wallet you copy the address from the mobile app you do the transaction and you receive it without needing the card the card is needed to sign a transaction to approve a transaction so it's only for outgoing transactions that you need the card for just checking your balance or receiving transactions, you don't need it. You can do that from your mobile app without the card being present. All right, now the next thing that's important for me is the coin support. Let's find out if it supports enough blockchains and networks, especially if you're going to be holding out coins. And uh, from their website here, I've selected the Shield Bio. It's uh, pretty much the same as with V20 and the W20. Now, I'm already using the V20. This is the device that I have reviewed it previously. And uh, I also have reviewed the W20. So if you want to check out these devices, these are bigger devices. For me, the V20 is ideal because it is one of the largest devices that I have. And it's much easier to type in. So for more complex transactions, you know, things that are not really on the go, I'm using this device and I'm very happy with it. I've had it for several years already. But of course, the, uh, the fact that this is so compact, the bio is perfect for traveling. And uh, we do travel a lot these days and we also want to be carrying at least, uh, you know, some of the more important coins with us so that uh, if there is uh, any major market moves and you need to be uh, selling, you know, some of your altcoins that you're holding in the wallet, it is with you. It's available and you can do it. And also you don't really want to be holding your altcoins on the exchange for too long because that is not safe. 
So uh, it's ideal for traveling. And from what I can see, it supports a lot of blockchains. Now I'll quickly go through some of the main ones. I'm not going to go through all of them. It's actually more than 10,000 coins and tokens. But of course we have Bitcoin and Ethereum and all of the Ethereum tokens. Uh, Tether is here, BNB is here and uh, it's Binance Smart Chain. So it's all of the tokens on Binance Smart Chain. Solana is here with uh, all of the tokens on Solana. Uh, Lido Staked Ether is here separately. Uh, also a USDC coin is a quite a lot of blockchains. Uh, you know, it's available on Base and Celo and Tron and Solana and Polygon and Arbitrum and Avalanche and Ethereum. They're all present here. Same goes for Chainlink. I just saw it, so I'm gonna quickly skip to Chainlink. As you can see, it's available on all of these different blockchains, not just on Ethereum. And this is important because um, on many other wallets, you will find Chainlink only on, on Ethereum as an ERC20 token, and that is expensive to transact. You know, it's expensive to move your Chainlink back and forth if it's going to be an ERC20 token. So you, for me, it's actually uh, definitely a deal breaker if uh, the, it's not supported on other blockchains. And it is. Uh, Polygon is here, of course, with all of its tokens. Uh, Uniswap is here. Litecoin, Pepe, Fetch AI is here as well. Fetch AI, by the way, is undergoing currently a merge. So very soon it will be ASI. It's not going to be Fetch AI. We'll see when this will happen. It should be this week, actually. Uh, DAI is here. We have Wrapped Earth. Uh, Render is here as well. Uh, Immutable X is here. Uh, we have Kronos, the network of uh, Crypto.com, even though, quite frankly, Who's going to be holding Kronos in a hardware wallet? I don't really know. If you're holding any CRO, most likely you're staking it and this is why you're holding it. Anyways, it's here. It's supported. The Cosmos uh, uh, network is also supported. All of the tokens on Cosmos. Manto is also, and Manto is uh, one of the new tokens that launched just recently, just a couple of months ago. It's already supported. So, uh, guys, I'm not going to go through everything, but you can see. Every major network is supported and even those that are not the most popular ones, they're also present here, which is great. So you have absolutely fantastic choice here of networks that are supported, that you can hold pretty much any token you can think of, it is supported. Okay, now talking about the price, well, it's $150, which is uh, less than their previous flagship product, which was the SecuX Nifty, which is $200. So it's not the cheapest product on the market. There are cheaper products, but in its class and for everything that it has, especially the fact that it is a card size wallet with a screen, the only other card sized wallet with screen is the Cool Wallet Pro, and this is the same price. So price wise, it is a very standard price for its category. And this is pretty much it. So let's summarize all the pros, all the benefits. It's got a biometric authentication. Fingerprints are much uh, harder to compromise compared to pins or passwords, which can be guessed or stolen or shared unintentionally. And it's also easier to sign with just a touch. Also, it has a secure element, it has a secure chip certified CCEAL5+, e-link display, which is easy to read, hands-on clear signing, meaning accessing the wallet and authorizing transactions is as simple as just placing your finger on the sensor, providing seamless and intuitive process. And as we saw, more than 10,000 coins and tokens are supported, plus NFT support. You can fit up to 500 accounts on this device. There is a Bluetooth connectivity, Wallet Connect and MetaMask also are integrated. Uh, there is a web-based app that you're using to navigate the device, the USB charging station. It has a pin entry enabled and it's BIP32, BIP39 and BIP44 compatible, meaning these are the seed phrase compatibility. Downsides? Well, if I have to think of anything to criticize here, it would be the micro USB cable since we are rapidly moving towards USB-C for all of my devices and I only have a couple of items now that use this type of a cable and in the next couple of years, everything will be USB-C anyway. This means I still have to carry around a micro USB cable with me when I travel. It's not a big deal, but uh, I would have preferred a USB-C just for convenience. And with Bluetooth, 
although theoretically it is vulnerable to hacks, it means that you have to really be targeted specifically. Bluetooth needs to be on at the right time and uh, you won't be keeping the device on all the time. So it's a, it's a much smaller chance for this to happen, for a hack on your Bluetooth. Maybe it would be ideal if it was air gapped, but then it would have to be um, to have a camera to scan QR codes and it won't really be a credit card size device anymore. So I'm not really worrying about it not being air gapped and there are many other devices that are. But uh, speaking of air gapped, I just saw on their website, uh, this is uh, it's still in pre-launch, it's still in development. They have a brand new device that is uh, not yet launched. It, they have an Indiegogo campaign for it. So for early investors, you can scoop it at half price. And uh, it's, it's actually quite a few good deals on this one. 72 euros for the gold one amazing and 109 euros you have here for the Neo X. It's called Neo, CQX Neo. This is uh, still in development as I said, uh, just go and find out more about this because you might actually want to go for this one as well because um, this is air gap device and you know my stance is that air gap is the most secure uh, because you don't have any connectivity with internet in an air gapped device. There is no Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi, no USB, none of that. Uh, you usually communicate with QR codes. Now, I don't really know enough about this device to tell you whether this is the case here, but that's how I imagine it would work because um, from the other air gap devices that I have, and I do have a few of them, uh, this is how it works always. So they have a few different offers here for early investors. So if you want to get it at uh, half price, this is your chance. Go on their website and you will find the announcement for this and it will send you to this Indiegogo page here. And the other thing that you cannot do with that device is have multiple accounts on the same device. So if it's not really a downside, but uh, on other wallets, you can have multiple accounts, meaning that you can set up two or three accounts and operate them with the same device because it could be used for extra security. You can actually set up a couple of accounts. One can have the majority of your funds. The other one can have just a little bit of funds. So if something happens and someone is forcing you, you know, stealing your money uh, and forcing you to give away your passphrase or, you know, your pin code and to unlock your wallet, you can unlock the wallet with the less amount. And, uh, and this way they're not going to guess that you do have a second account on the same device. So this uh, could be useful, but of course, for something that is going to be used on the go, so to speak, for something as uh, little as this, you wouldn't really want to be holding all of your crypto here. This for me, uh, it's ideally, this will be a secondary device. You will still have one bigger device that stays in the house and that is well hidden and everything. And this could be your secondary device. They can be linked to the same account so that you can actually manage it uh, from different locations. Maybe you have one device that is sitting in one house somewhere safe. And, uh, and as you travel, you're using this one with the same accounts. This is what I'm doing. I actually have more than 12 wallets at this point and I'm not using 12 different accounts. I'm using five different accounts with 12 wallets. So I am using at least two wallets per account so that uh, one of these wallets is staying in one house, another wallet is staying in another house and a third wallet is actually traveling with me. This is for the, the two accounts that I have that are more kind of on the go. So it's actually convenient to use a seed phrase from a previous wallet, set this up with an already account that you've uh, created and this way you can navigate the same account with multiple devices. If you lose one of the devices, you still have the same account on another device and you can work with that and you don't lose access to your money. All right, guys, well, this is everything for today's review of the SecuX Shield Bio. This is the latest hardware wallet from SecuX. And as I said, there is another one still in development. You can actually go on their website and check it out. Use my link in the description below. Also, if you're getting this device or any of the SecuX devices, make sure to use my invite code because that gives you a discount. 
and don't forget to download the PDF from the description below, a free PDF that I've compiled for you with my reviews of the top hardware wallets, my favorite devices, so uh, you can compare them and you can find out which is the best device for you. For some of them, for many of them actually, I do have discount codes. Not all of them, but uh, uh, because I've been doing these reviews for a long time now, ever since 2016, and very soon I will be making a comparison between these two. Actually, maybe I will just do a proper comparison between the three, the Tangem, the Cool Wallet Pro and the SecuX Bio, Shield Bio, because these are the three card sized wallets that I'm currently using and I'm very happy with all of them. But uh, I will do a comparison for you because I know that this is what everyone is asking for. So make sure to subscribe to this channel if you're new and make sure to enable notifications so you know when I'm posting a new episode and watch out for the next episode where I will be comparing the top three card-sized hardware wallets on the market. Until then, stay profitable.